And now for the Monero development segment. Yo ho, D Goon. Hey, how do I sound? You sound you sound great. All right, awesome. How y'all doing? Hey, how's it going, man? How are you? Doing pretty well. Sorry to hear about the rain in New York. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we went we went to a concert last night. It was fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. And then yeah, I can't, we canceled my daughter's uh birthday party because we do it out in a park and we didn't want to take a chance because we did do it one year in the rain. The kids had a blast. They had a blast. They didn't know, you know, it was like amazing for them. Like, it's raining. But it was like pouring and the parents are like, you know, to this day still talk about it. Like, oh, remember that party? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we wanted, no. We wanted to avoid that because there was like a, a, even just like a 30% chance of rain. We weren't taking chances this year. So, but um, I'm just looking through the chat. You wanted to go first today, man. I feel bad. Now I'm just reading in the chat here. I hope uh, no, it's fine. Well, hope you didn't hold. I'm just on. I'm just on um, visiting. I have a wedding coming up. I have to go not today, but I'm visiting friends. So I just wanted to go ahead and you know get all that handled. Then oh, the work the thing you can play. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, so, sorry for holding you up. But, oh uh, yeah, sorry about that. I no, that's fine. You guys are oh, good. I just realized that <laughs> on the chat. Um. Yeah. What do you got for us today, man? We'll make it. We'll um. Make it. Talking about the. See, that's the thing that. Stuff in the Monero space moves so fast. I'm talking about the um, Magic Grants, EAE, and churning funding. Like okay. we literally talked yeah. to the chat about Monday about it, and like by the time like it got funded like it's Friday. Funded. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we still have some good stuff to cover. But it's already funded, and I don't know if they accept overfunding. But this issue has already been addressed. Not addressed, but it's been funded. So I'm just going right. to talk about what, what got funded and why it got funded, essentially. Yeah. But yeah, so um, pretty much there's some really cool Monero research. There's this, um, basically this not-for-profit run, I believe Justin from Cake Wallet runs it with Devrick, I believe is her name. And there's probably other people in the background. Pretty much they're a not-for-profit that accepts donations to fix certain specific issues in different cryptocurrencies. A lot of the work is in Monero. I know they do some stuff in Fyro. I think they have an oxen fund up right now to help all those projects and they pretty much offer like a different way to monero's decentralized anonymous funding mechanism and there's some you know benefits to that and downsides but that's pretty much like for another video but today or this week there was a big research to defeat an eae attack and analyze the effectiveness of churning procedures so i'm going to go over pretty much what an eae attack even is what churning is and how this this um, research will hopefully make Monero even that much more private and really um, secure. And then just to give you a background on EAE, like what it is, this is um, Isthmus, which is a Monero Research Lab researcher. And they are quoted saying, I think that the EAE attack is one of Monero's biggest practical attack services currently. I see value in quant quantification plus real-world data for best practices. And like I said, EAE attack has been around for a while. Don't be worried. It, it says one of the biggest practical attack servers. doesn't mean that it is that you can actually track Monero or anything like that. It's just it's the weakest link in the very strong chain that is Monero. So what is an EAE attack, you might be asking. And it stands for Eve, Alice, Eve attack. And I don't want to get too much into the weeds. I'm trying to always, always balance that... Um, approachability without being like super like boring and technical but if you're if you know anything about monero if you watched any video in the past <laughs> um basically monero hides the sender by basically taking all the inputs here and mixing them together so let's say this orange one is your i want to buy some coffee from doug and, and gr gratuitous i would send a transaction but that transaction would get bundled with all these orange decoy spins also and they get pretty much, you can think of it like a, they get mixed in. If you're familiar with like um, Bitcoin mixing, if you have a background Bitcoin mixing, it's basically, Monero is basically non-interactive um, mixing, which is, it's a, this big paper written by um, like Serang and, and, and other people back in like, Ringsing T was like 2016, but it's really cool stuff. Uh, but so non-interactive mixing. And so you have the real spin here in the orange one. And I think right now we're at, 16 or oh, 15 decoy spins. I think Seraphis wants to take up to like 
240, which is like mind boggling, right? We're at 16 right now. Surface is hopefully gonna take it up to like 200 and 200 or something. Really cool stuff. But basically, like, so when you send a transaction, I can show you on the Monero blockchain right now. Well, you think of this in this way. Let me go back here. On the block explorer, you have this. This is a block explorer from local Monero. On the left, you have the input transactions. So you see all of these. These are 16 right here, and we, as an outsider, don't know which one is the real one. The only one, the only person who knows who the, the real one is, is the person who sent the transaction and the person who received the transaction, right? This is cryptographic, cryptographically secure ring signatures. How Monero works as a basis. So we send a send a transaction. Once again, we have here we have the possible 16 inputs that could be used, and we have the uh, two addresses here. And a really cool, interesting thing is one of these addresses might be fake actually, because Monero actually pads all transactions to have at least two output addresses. So even one of the addresses might be fake, might be a dummy one, but all of these, the real spin is somewhere in here and the real address is also somewhere in here also. So I want to get that through, make that pretty much simpler. Let's go back to this analogy. So when you think about Monero, how Monero privacy, very, very basic way, the way it works is, is that you have 16 forking paths in, in every transaction or more. Like one of these paths on this screen is correct. One of these is the, the real outspin, the output. We don't know which one. Cryptographically, we cannot determine which which is which, right? So that's the basis of Monero. Try to make it as simple as possible. But now that we understand the basics of how Monero works, let's go into what an Eve Alice Eve attack actually is. And basically, an, another name for Eve Alice Eve attack is going to be the poison out poison output attack. And what happens with a poison output attack? Let's say you are you're in a country where selling Bibles is illegal, right? So let's say you're you're a legal Bible seller. So a government would come to if they want to perform a poison output or even even attack with you. What they would do is they would buy Bibles from you and track those inputs across the chain until you um, in, in encounter a KYC service, essentially. So you see here, Eve spends some money here. She, they're the one um, attacking them. Eve can be thought of as a government or some person trying to spy on this uh, seller. And this transaction works his way across the blockchain. And if Alice eventually spins at a, you say, let's say you use something like Kraken, which is a KYC service, right? That output will get shown on the, trans, on the blockchain as being spent there. But that's just one transaction. That's not enough to, like, that's not enough to actually be able to prove that you are Alice, you are the illegal Bible seller, right? So what they do is they do a ton of transactions with you, right? Because one isn't enough, but if they do like, you know, let's do 100, 200, 300 transactions with you, their chances of being correct go up, right? There's there's all these forking paths and some of them are real, but the chances of them being correct go up. Is there any question that I'm going too fast? <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Right, but you you're never gonna re reach a hundred percent. I I know for a fact that Alice is this this Bible seller. You will never ever 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 get that. So that so it's not like you're getting like maybe you're moving from like one percent accuracy to like three five six percent. Right, we don't know because people aren't chain analysis companies aren't like public when they prosecute someone with their math and stuff, which is. Right, it's always probabilistic. You're not determined. Even always, with right? Facts, you're not deterministically. Uh, yeah, you're never, ever, ever going to get deterministic. Um, unless you literally break into someone's house and, and cash them on their computer, logged into their wallet, you're never going to cryptographically know for sure what which outputs go where. And and the really big, I don't know, something that Arctic Mind talks about is how it's like they're basically prosecuting people. These chain analysis companies, they're prosecuting people without like on a five percent probability with no math behind it. They're not public with their math. So we don't know what that boundary is, but it's really messed up stuff. But essentially that's what an Eve as Eve attack is. I just want to keep, I don't want to make it a little more simpler. And you can think of a narrow as having all these forking paths. Each transaction has at least 16. And when you compound that across the whole chain, right, you get on hundreds of possible transaction paths and only one of them is actually real. And you don't know which one is real, but you can get closer to the real one by just sending a ton of transactions, right? So if I do a ton of transactions with this illegal Bible seller, I will increase my chances of being correct, but I won't, I will never hit like 
and I, I don't want to be, I'm not a statistician, this is more a number, a question for Rucknam, but like, I haven't seen any hard data on they can actually get like above six, you know, 5% accuracy rate, which is like, basically at that point, you're just randomly guessing, right? <laughs> I haven't seen any any data that shows people can get any better than just random, randomly guessing, but like, I, once again, I'm not a statistician, that'd be a better question for someone like Rucknam or Serene. So basically, now that we know what EAE attack is, now that we know this, Monero's weakest link in his very strong privacy chain, um, Serang was actually, um, I guess, contracted or is working with Magic Grants. And he got funded, I believe, for like $27,000. I believe something like that, which is like crazy. And, and it got raised in, I believe, less than a, around a week, maybe. So Monero people are awesome. And basically, Serang is going to research how to fix this. But if you're asking, how do I avoid EAE attack? How bad is it? You should not be worried. Once again, it's all probabilistic. And I haven't seen any data. There has been no one got arrested or got busted, as far as we know, with EAE attack. So short term, just don't use KYC. Right. As Doug said, something like use something like local Monero with a non-KYC exchange. Because even if they do do a ton of transactions with you, if you never touch a KYC um, service, they don't know who you are. Right. So it's like you can't really track someone without KYC. They, they, they would just have a bunch of transactions and random addresses, essentially. A long term, hopefully, Serang's research that got funded just now will hopefully help reduce this issue, give us more insight into this issue. And super, super long term, as all, the answer is always move away from ring sig or maybe maybe get bigger ring sizes. Like, I don't know if it's going for like 250 something. Like, that's still up in the air. They haven't decided yet, but like 16. 250, you're going to get some major, major privacy upgrades. <laughs> Are there um, any questions about EAE attack? So there's also was another portion of this, which is like churning. I'm going to go over it right now. But I want to make sure we got EAE, EAE attacks pretty well covered. Oh, I think it's great. I think the one thing to point out is, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you already did it, but just to, to reiterate for those who aren't, you know, uh, watch this stuff as closely as we do, that's, and somebody's hearing this right now, like, oh my God, you can do an EAE. <laughs> It's it's you know this is one component of Monero right so there's there's three basic pillars mm -hmm. to Monero's privacy there's the stealth addresses the confidential transactions and the rank signatures and the stealth addresses hide the receiver and there there's no known attack for that confidential transactions hide the amount there's no known attack for that they're they're both pure in encryption methods it's just the ring signature where we see this potential weakness and this one type of attack where it's not like a dragnet surveillance that can be done to to kind of um, reveal who the senders are. Uh, it's where if somebody was pinpointed and somebody with a lot of resources was going after them to try to, you know, uh, make a determination of, you know, what Monero they, they, they own and sent. And in some scenario where they put enough resources to it, uh, which you which you outline, you know, uh, somebody selling, you know, some vendor who's selling something, uh, they would need to make, uh, I guess, a lot of a lot of transactions on one end, and then they would also have to be in cahoots with the with the KY seed uh, mm -hmm. uh, end of things, right? With the with the exchange, so uh, like a government would be an example, right? So they're attacking you on one end, trying to get this data, and then they're in cahoots with the exchange, and then they 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 cross reference and could. Even then, it's still probabilistically say, wait, we think this might be you. Uh, these Monero might have come from that guy, that same guy who ended up at this KYC exchange. And like you said, uh, not using KYC is one solution. Um, but the I guess the other which you're about to get into is is the the mixing your coins along the way, mm -hmm. right? So not so even so if you are this this one person who you think you may be pinpointed for these this one reason. Uh, for in this one scenario, uh, you may be a potential victim of an EAE attack. There are things you can do, and probably the best thing, I guess, would be to to move your coins, mix your coins, right? Yeah, and honestly, I I haven't come across an actual like if running an EAE attack sounds so complicated. I, I would think that the government would just get a warrant for your house and come like arrest you, right? Because if, if they suspect you and you're on a KYC exchange, like, am I going to sit down and actually buy like a hundred? things from this person i'm just probably just gonna like get a warrant <laughs> you know but it's just like if you you're not gonna care about the, the the issue is the kyc exchange not monero or anything like that specifically but yeah i don't i haven't seen come across any indictment or any government paper that's shown they actually went through this whole elaborate process it, they usually go like well 
this guy bought something on Darknet, used Bitcoin, went to an exchange. We got his name. We and we raided his house and found everything. Right. <laughs> so this, I don't you know. know the, 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 this would be a scenario where the, you know I guess there's a Darknet vendor accepting mm -hmm. Monero, right, and then is attacked by a state actor where they're trying to reveal their identity and. The Monero vendor isn't too uh, isn't too savvy, and they're accepting yeah. a lot, making lots of transactions with this attacker, and then they just turn around directly without you know doing any hops in between, and just send their Monero all their Monero received directly to a KYC <laughs> exchange to unload it. Um, you know, so once again, I but but I. But I'm not surprised if there would be some vendor who could potentially get stuck in that scenario because they're not taking any additional steps. So it's it's important to get the information out there. Monero yeah. is just trying to be overly honest about things, mm -hmm. uh, about what our flaws are. And that's why we constantly talk about this because uh, rather than shove, you know, sweeping it under the rug, uh, continue to talk about it with the hopes of fixing it, which is it appears to be the, the the direction we're moving in with this with this uh, funding request here for for Serang. Yeah, like I said, if, if you're that person that um, Doug was talking about earlier, who's like somehow skilled enough to be a dark web vendor but doesn't understand, you just don't go straight to an exchange. Like, please, <laughs> please, I, I, I don't if know who wrong, you are, yeah. <laughs> but right. but please, whatever. You, because I, I was with you, I'm like, yeah, I don't know who I've never met a person who's that technically skilled, but also does like just like terrible opsec. I don't, I don't know, but that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's get into churning, which hope Serang is hopefully going to give us some more information about if this helps fix this EAE attack, or I guess not fix. It's not really broken, but reduce the effectiveness of this. And the, qu the big question is that communities have for a while is churning, which is basically. You take your if if you can think of every transaction as a big uh, mixer, so you 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 would just do a ton of transactions which would mix your coins up, and there hasn't been any solid research on if churning is good or bad. But that was the second half of this grant. So the first grant was to see research EAE attack, get more some more data on it, and the second half was like, oh, maybe churning could be something that could help prevent the EAE attack, or at least like make it. It will not prevent it. Once again, it's not really practical, but make it super, super even more impractical. And what is churning, you might ask? Um, like basically, you can think of a, a narrow transaction as a big mixer. You have your real input somewhere in, in this stack here. And then you have um, 15 other transactions right now. Seraph is upgrade to like 200 plus, so massive number. And then one of these addresses is actually the real one. So it's a mixer. So you would just do a ton of these transactions which will basically mix your coins up even, even more, right? Which will make it so much harder even tracking than it is now. Maybe, which is like, because there's some good, good things and bad things about it. Mixing is always good for privacy, right? But the one bad thing about mixing is if you do it poorly, you can actually fingerprint yourself. Let's say you're, you're like some dev guy. And you're like, all right, I'm going to program my wallet to mix my coins every 15 blocks for 10 blocks, right? And you, you, write, you write a little Python script that does that, that would actually be terrible because you would be fingerprinting yourself. 